Greetings comrades and welcome to a Victoria 3 video and I'm sure many of you are wondering why am I doing Victoria 3 in your review you said you didn't recommend it well like I said it's a good game it's just I think a little bit pricey in terms of what they're asking for however I think I can get a couple good videos out for you guys on Victoria 3 before I'm just about done with the game because I'm getting to the point where you know it's exhausted all of its content. Oh, today we are going to be playing as a country I think that I haven't played before in any playthrough yet. And this is going to also be a sort of economic guide and at least show you some of the starting moves that I make to get things going and get things off the ground. So, with that being said, what country are we going to play as today? Well, it is the great nation of Australia. Australia, 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 we love you, honey. However, we are not going to be just playing as Australia because Australia is divided up into several different districts at this time, which is historically accurate. So you can choose which one of these districts or dominions you want to play as and which one will ultimately be the unifying force for Australia. So with that being said, now the question is, which one of these dominions are we going to choose to unify Australia with? Obviously, New South Wales is the easiest one, but today we are actually going to be going to the little tiny island of Tasmania, which at this point is called Vandeman's Land, which is also historically accurate. This was basically just a penal colony for quite some time. At the start of the game, we only have 23,500 people living on the island. And obviously, it's going to be a little bit of a rough start. But that being said, it's actually surprisingly easy to unify Australia as uh, this little island right here. So without further ado, we'll get started. Everything is going to be on default mode. So what are our first moves going to be? Well... Obviously, we don't have a lot on the little island of Tasmania, so we are going to have to get more of everything. But most importantly, we are going to need to get more people to this island. And thankfully, because we are a British Dominion, we are in the British market, and this gives us access to everything that we're going to need in order to get things off the ground. And honestly, being part of the British market, once you understand the mechanics of the game, is a huge, huge benefit to getting started because it means that we can get all the inputs we need into our factories and into our mines without having to worry about building it off in the first place. We will have to think about those kind of things later on in the game once we declare independence because we are going to declare independence. And at that point, you're going to be in your own market. But... We will cross that bridge when we get to it. So thankfully, being part of the British market means that we won't lack for inputs. And it also means we won't lack for people. Because the very first thing we are going to do is do a greener grass campaign to Tasmania. And this is going to bring in people not just from all around Australia. It will bring people from all around the British Empire. And even all around the world to our little rocky island. So that will deal with our population problem as best we can so now let's move in and ask ourselves what buildings are we going to build first again because we are part of the british market we have a lot more flexibility in terms of what we can build but if i were say an independent country right now in my own market what would i be looking to build well i'd see what resources i have right now tasmania has iron lead wood and then we have a fishing and whaling stations. But this is a pretty good start. Iron, lead, and wood. With this, we can build lots of different things. We can go into tools very easily, make a ton of tools. Those are very important inputs for virtually every building in the game. You can use lead to make glass. Logging camps also tons of different opportunities for you to build a furniture. And then when it comes to our agricultural we've actually got some pretty good choices here as well sugar a very nice agricultural product tea as well cotton will help us we can move into textiles so we've got lots of options we've got lots of options in terms of what we could build so first off we're going to build just the basics 
right in the middle of a wheat farm. Very exciting. We are going to build, after that, an iron mine. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to build a logging camp first and then the iron mine. And uh, we'll save the lead mine for now. And then after those basic inputs are built, the basic factories I like to start off with are food because everybody needs food. And because we have wood, obviously we're going to build furniture. And because we need tools and we have iron, we're going to build a tooling workshop. And from there, that will be, and you know what, we will be a, we will be a glass producer as well because we have the wood and lead. So those will be our initial building choices. Moving on to our initial technological research. I think if you don't already have it, depending on who you're playing, one of the best researches to get at the start of the game, I think, is mechanical tools. This will unlock a lot of increased production options for a lot of your buildings, and it won't cost you a lot of input resources to get there. So with that, let us look at the laws that Tasmania or Van Diemen's Land starts with. So we're a presidential republic, which is weird, which should be a parliamentary republic. But whatever, we have voting, wealth voting, racial segregation. We want to do better than that. So that's one we're going to change pretty quickly. Mercantilism sucks. We're going to change this one. Can't change it yet. Interventionalism is okay. We are definitely going to want to get colonial affairs. We have religious schools, no help. Okay, no migrant controls. That's good. Great. So yeah, we got some decent laws here. Things have definitely going to change, but it's nice to start off with things like per, per capita taxation, no migrant controls. Also having interventionalism isn't bad either. So we got some decent laws to start off the game. Lots of laws, but none of them are what I want. The only one that we're going to start off with right now is we're going to take colonial resettlement. So with that, we can now look at our finances and obviously we don't have a lot going on. So the main thing we're going to want to do is obviously increase our construction capacity. Unfortunately, we can't do that right now. We don't have the money and resources to do that. We might be able to put in some consumption taxes, but this is not going to give us very much. So, well, we may as well take, again, services is a good one to tax. That's a very popular one to tax. I like to tax the upper brackets. It's my, my style. So with that, yes, we can also we'll tax their luxury clothes, their luxury clothing. Wow, we have 53 radicals. <laughs> they don't like colonial resettlement. Oh, wow. Okay, they are very anti Colonial resettlement, so off on this one. Obviously, it's not worth having a revolution right off the cave. We'll, we'll, we'll enact census suffrage when we get the chance. But with that, until we build up our production capabilities, build up a few of these buildings, we, we have nothing to do but sit back and wait. Obviously, I can, I can play around these taxes. May as well put taxes down to the minimum. That will help encourage people to move here. And we're not making very much money anyway, so it's not like it's really going to make a huge difference for us. Obviously, once we start building a few of these buildings, people will start to move into our little island here. And people will start to take up jobs. We just finished our first wheat farm. Mm -hmm. Nah, we'll take the fruits and harvesting tools because we will be able to get the tools because we're part of daddy britain's customs union you always get five construction capacity no matter what that's like your base bottom limit and yeah until we get some more money there's not really much there's not really much point in terms of building up our our production or construction so we can see we are now officially having migrants move into Tasmania. We are now almost doubled in population. We started off at around 25,000 and now we're pushing 45,000. And our annual projected migration is an additional 16,000 people, which is a population growth of nearly 40%. So obviously huge population growth 
on this tiny island and it's only going to get bigger as we get more and more buildings built that will encourage more people to move here for work we have now doubled our population and from there we can get more taxes get more money well now we have the opportunity let's enact census suffrage but yeah, I guess I should hold off on colonial affairs for now. It doesn't. It is nice to have early on. If we had had it at the beginning, it would have been nice. But we don't, and uh, we don't really have a, a population to colonize anywhere yet, anyway. And you can see we have quite an interesting cultural makeup here. We have mostly Aboriginal population at thirty-one percent, thirty percent Australian, and then ten percent Franco-Canadian. Again, because we're part of the British market people will move from all over the empire to come and live and work here. All right, so we've researched mechanical tools. Like I said, this will give us access to a couple nice benefits. It will immediately allow us to move into making steel tools, which we will do, because again, we're part of the British market. So hopefully they have steel in the market and we can use that to build tools. If not, we'll just go down to iron. This can also give us precision tools, which is nice. And we'll take the leaded glass, sweeteners because we have the sugar, pot stills because we have the sugar. Okay, perfect. Logging camps, we're going to go to sawmills and hardwood production. Both of those are going to be beneficial for us. So with that, the next one I like to take is already almost done for us, the atmospheric engine. This will help our mining production considerably. And I'm about to do something pretty dramatic here. Once our first food industry gets built, I am going to build our first construction industry. And then from there, we're going to move into, hopefully, <laughs> we're going to have to tax the crap out of everybody. But hopefully that will allow us to really get things going here. Atmospheric engine is done. So our next research, I have some interesting choices. I could go railways if I really want to rush that. It doesn't take that long to research. We don't really need anything in our military quite yet. But it may be beneficial to research central banking at this time. Also, actually, you know what? Let's take nationalism. And I'll tell you why. Because this will give us a moment or give me a moment to explain how we federate Australia. So in order to federate Australia, you need to research nationalism first. And then you have to have a larger GDP than your neighbors. And you also have to be on good terms with them. So that reminds me, we may as well start improving relations with New South Wales and start boosting up that uh, diplomatic relationship because we're going to need to be a lot higher than neutral. Good day, Bruce. Oh, hello, Bruce. How are you, Bruce? Big crop, Bruce. <laughs> Where's Bruce? It's not here, Bruce. Hi, good day, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Hello, Bruce. How are you, Bruce? All right, our first construction industry is built. And yeah, we are deeply in the red. Unfortunately, we're going to have to tax liquor. And this is Australia, so we're going to make a lot of money off that. Fortunately, we built quite a bit of reserve before we finished that construction building. So we're going to be able to coast on that for a little bit. And hopefully that will give us, the, give us enough to get back into the green. Okay, we got census suffrage, which gives expands the voting rights to illiterate men, not just wealthy men. All right. Well, this is not looking great in terms of our <laughs> in terms of our economy. Okay, now with nationalism unlocked, we can start to federate Australia. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this right away, but let's check it out. Let's see if we have the prerequisites. And no, we don't. Okay, we still have to boost up our relations and our GDP, so we will get there. We got the atmospheric engines. Hopefully, once that tooling workshop gets done, we'll be able to get back into the money. All right, we got our tooling workshop. And it's making us tons of money, but it's still not enough. We have a lot of people flocking to it right now. It's full, fully employed already. All right, let's get railways now. 
go. Okay, perfect. This will give us some great options to adjust ourselves. What do we want? I really want multiculturalism, but I don't have egalitarianism. Let's get national militia. Get rid of peasant levies. I think I am going to go laissez-faire after this. I've never gone laissez-faire this early in the game, and I was trying to figure out what am I, what am I going to do long term? Am I going to go communist or am I, am I going to go laissez-faire? Because those are the two best options of the game right now. And I think laissez-faire might just, given the cards that we have right now, might be the way to go. Struggling to hire a lot of these industries. That makes sense. A very few population. Well, it's still growing. We have, a, again, a bizarre makeup. Now Portuguese people make up 15% of the population. Let's go laissez-faire. The thing is, I don't have enough population to work in a lot of these places. That's the real kicker. Uh, GDP just crashed. Oh, well, we're finally... Oh, no. We were very briefly making money for a moment there, and not anymore. So with our first railroad in place, things are starting to look a little bit better for us. We're starting to claw our way back into a reasonable amount of money, but it's still not great. So I'm hoping with laissez-faire we can decrease... Hooray! We're finally in the green again. We can decrease our building expenses, essentially because the capitalists, quote-unquote, will fund them for you. And now, finally, we're getting back into the green, we're getting our footing back, and we can start to invest in buildings which are profitable, and hopefully then we can finally get bigger GDP than in New South Wales. Ooh, nitroglycerin, let's take that. That's going to be another good factory for us to build. A chemical factory. Okay, I want to decrease taxes you know what I really even though I want nitroglycerin oh I need to get egalitarianism anyway because I want to get to multiculturalism which is one of the best laws in the game because then people are just going to start flooding into our country from everywhere essentially and our population is going to go through the roof let's see if we can enact it now perfect and that should help us tremendously all right. Ooh, we're finally getting back. We're finally, things are getting back to where they should be. Things are looking a little bit grim there for a while. I was starting to get worried. But now that we're paying off our loans, our interest is coming down. We're at plus, wow, almost plus 3,000. Gold, finally. Gold discovered in Tasmania. That is a huge boon to us. Right now we can finally go down to almost no taxes. So yeah, laissez-faire was the right way to go. It took us a little while to adjust, but now we are laughing. Yeah, we, we gotta get this bill passed. And now we can see we have a huge increase, holy smokes, of people that have moved here so with those few adjustments. Oh, I, oh, sorry, I missed that. We did get a event that we had a massive influx of Irish immigration. So massive, in fact, that now the Irish make up 60% of the population. And they have, you know, 264,000 Irish people. And in terms of political strength, though, they are still beaten by the Australians. So yeah, we're getting a massive influx of people moving in here. And, oh, okay, just skyrocketed our GDP. Is this enough to federate? Really? Okay, we're, we're getting there. We're not quite there yet, but we are very, very close to overtaking them. Hooray, multiculturalism, perfect. Perfect, perfect. We are going to go guarantee liberties. There we are, large numbers. Now, because we have multiculturalism, one of the big benefits of this, and now, especially because we have Living taxes, I can just boom, boost myself back up before starting to look a little bit weary. So, now one of the great things about multiculturalism and why it's such a valuable law 
is that you can see that none of these populations are oppressed in our system anymore. They all have a political voice and that makes people from other countries much more likely to come and move here. And because they'll have a job, they'll have political rights and that kind of stuff. And this is just gonna keep boosting our economy. We're already starting to snowball here pretty sizably. I can take off road maintenance now that we don't need that anymore. Nitroglycerin, good. Wow, war with the Netherlands. So <laughs> our population is ballooned now at uh, 644,000 people. Okay, one of the cardinal rules about Victoria 3 is what I like to call A, B, B. A, always, B, B, and B, building. Always be building in this game because the more you're building, the more you are increasing your GDP, the more goods you're producing, and the more and more things are gonna snowball out of control for you. We can finally federate New South Wales. However, well, we have to wait for this goddamn war to be over. So now our construction sector is starting to expand, starting to develop. You know what, I'm gonna throw even one more on there. And our little island is booming. We are about to reach almost a million people on this tiny island after starting with only 25,000. So if I need to, I can just boost up our, there we go. Okay, this is perfect, the war is over. It's time to federate with New South Wales. And now Van de Min has a lot more land. His land's looking pretty sizable right now. And uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful moment for Australia. As uh, we have expanded into our next zone here. So let us start to incorporate a state or two. Also, we will build a railroad there because they're running out of infrastructure ah oh, gold mines look at this we're just gonna be laughing now beautiful but yeah with that our gdp has jumped considerably our population has more than doubled or excuse me has not more than doubled my bad but it has increased by close to a million people all right so now that we have incorporated this large swath of Australia. We have to wait a little bit. We have to wait two years until we can federate the next part. The nice thing, however, is that we don't need to continually build up relationships. All right, and now we can declare interests. My declared interest is gonna be up here. One of the great things about Australia, Australia is a, a really good country to play as, a uh, really wonderful country because they have access to every resource you could possibly need essentially and you can play a very self-sustaining independent australia or you can use those resources and you know become an economic powerhouse so it's a really good country that has a lot of options and quite fun to play as i think just looking at the cultures here again it's quite a mix australians are now back on top again with 30 percent of the population irish 30 percent afro-caribbean 23%. All right, so we can federate the next part of Australia. I'm desperately trying to get colonial affairs enacted, but the opposition keeps cock blocking me. Van Diamond's land expands. He's just getting so much land, he doesn't know what to do with it. And we have taken Southern Australia into the fold. I should probably incorporate them. I gotta know his depravity. Just gotta know how depraved that guy is. A finally colonial resettlement. That's going to hurt. They're going to have to build another. That's okay. All right. So now we finally have that. I'm going to establish colonies everywhere, pretty much. We'll get us our colonies on the Indonesian islands here. That will give us access to things like dye, which is great. And as I said before, rubber. Also some other things like coffee. Federate? Nice. All right, Western Australia is now part of Vandeman's land. Can we make Australia yet? I don't think we can. 
That's our cultures, nation formation. Damn, not quite. All right, so now Tasmania, our, the capital of Australia, has 1.3 million people living on it, accounting for about one third of Australia's entire population currently. I can't believe I forgot to trade off mercantilism. We're going to free trade right now. Hopefully that gets through the whole House of Commons. But look at that, free trade right off the bat. I paid Great Britain $20,000 just because I'm their puppet. Okay, this will help us a little bit. Mutual funds now. Okay, so now we can set everything to publicly trade in. Once again, keep the money moving. Everything is, no, I can't, I can't do publicly traded for the munitions factory. Who would have thought? Artists, yeah, publicly trade everything. There we go. That fixed everything. Fixed her right up. Okay, good. Now I can federate the last part is the United Tribes. I think with that, not only will we get federate Aust the Australian Federation, that's going to give us a ton of prestige, moves up to a dominion, which I guess it doesn't mean squat. That being said, we're now officially Tasmania. But it doesn't matter because we will be Tasmania for about all of 35 seconds. Because now we are going to form Australia. Oh, here we go. Federated the country of Australia. As, starting off as the tiny island of Tasmania. And I believe this is still going to be our capital, right? Yeah, we're, I'm going to keep my capital here. And all my, basically all my industry and production here in Tasmania and um, basically it's going to be the, the central hub it's going to be like where all the action is this tiny little island and the mainland is just like a big colony to send everything to Tasmania so with that our next moves should be okay with Australia created yeah, our next moves are going to be continuing to build up our economy. And then once we have enough money, I'm going to start switching over to some military technology and uh, hopefully be able to declare independence from Great Britain in the next 10 years or so. That's a big law here. We've passed proportional taxation. Let's get, that jumps us and gives us an extra 10k. And we are now giving, we're giving $40,000 to Great Britain. So I am thinking about our exit plan. I've maxed out our construction in Tasmania now. It is as high as it'll go. So basically we have nothing to do but to sit. I'm just, I've put all of these on auto expand so that as time goes on, I can micromanage them less and less and the capitalists will just do what they want to do and invest whenever they have the money and capability to invest so for now what i think i'm going to do because we're on a national conscription or sorry national militia i'm just going to throw down a few barracks a couple key areas particularly areas where i worry there might be British shenanigans. The nice thing about National Militia is you don't really rely too much on your standing army. It's pretty small. So you keep a small garrison, max it out at five in every territory. And then when war comes, you can basically just rely on your conscripts to really get the job done. Especially, it's especially good for scenarios like this, where we're not going to be doing a lot of conquest. Particularly what we're going to be doing right now is trying to declare independence here very shortly. So yeah, with that, we'll be able to hold the line wherever the British might come at us once we finish our barracks. And then our conscripts will be able to funnel in wherever they're needed. A great event here. Australia has become known around the world as a place that welcomes immigrants without discriminating. We either get prestige or immigration attraction. We'll take immigration attraction. Uh, we are a major power, and I believe we would be a great power if we could break free from the heel of Great Britain, which again is happening right now. I'm starting to diminish relationships with them. Revolutionary Oregon. Oh, the United States looking pretty good. 
Prussia might actually form Germany. So after quite some time, after federating Australia, we have 7 million people, but only 32% of them are Australian. We have English. I'd like to welcome the pommy bastard to God's own earth, and I'd like to remind them that we don't like stuck up sticky beaks here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Malaysian, Aboriginal, Portuguese, Moluccan, Flemish, Irish, Irish have decreased. They used to be 30% of the population. But uh, yeah, we have a huge array of cultures living here and uh, it's going great going great so far so our gdp is ballooning we have lots of loyalists almost no radicals our standard of living is increasing yeah literacy increasing everything is looking really good right now i'm just waiting to the point where i can declare independence here we go we can finally declare independence australia's War for independence is about to begin. We are currently paying... <laughs> That's a lot. That's ridiculous. We're paying 56000 to Britain just to just because we're their, their puppet. If we end this, we're going to get a ton of money. Oh, man. All these people are going to be against us, but that's okay. We The thing is, because we're an island, they're going to have to invade us manually, invade, do some naval invasions. And it's not going to be very much fun. Okay. Here we go. Fortunately, we don't have any front lines. So we can win this if we just basically sit around and England doesn't invade us. Okay, we can stop. Oh, shit. Okay, they are invading, actually. We're holding them back here. Shit, okay. That's not good. <laughs> I took our capital. Yeah, I really screwed this up. This isn't looking good at all. Oh my god. My assault just got destroyed. Let's see if we can take them out here. We have, but they have just such better defense than us. I have to capitulate. This sucks, but I screwed that up badly. Bad, very badly. The main thing I did was forget to activate my conscript before the war started but we can always try again i wish we have to pay to them it's not that much more but still it's enough to hurt us bitter I'm expelling our diplomats also i'm gonna upgrade this guy a bit create another general they also screwed things up a little bit with my military Made a couple mistakes, not putting everybody to their maximum capabilities. Okay, so I'm hoping we can do this before the British revolt ends, but we now have the capability to, once again, try for our own independence. And this time, we're going to make sure we mobilize. We're still looking good on mobilization. Okay, the... Revolt is over, but there's a real question of how are they actually going to be able to fight? Wow, tools are just suddenly super expensive. All right, here we go. Take two. Okay, well, at least these don't border. Okay. So now we have 140 battalions all defending this little area. Let's see what they look like. How do they stack up? Okay, well, they're still getting a little bit of equipment adjustment. I just switched them over to shrapnel artillery. But hopefully that will get resolved before the British get here. Hope they're trying to land here. But fortunately, they do not have the capability to actually take it. Things looking much better this time around. Just have to keep from going bankrupt is our main thing. And we have input shortages of everything. All right, well, I don't think they're going to be able to make a landing this time. But our... God damn, our money is just ridiculous. Okay, they are proposing independence. We will accept independence. All right, well, Australia is now 
officially independent. The issue is we are, yeah, we're in rough shape. I thought we would have more in terms of market access than this, but things are looking really bad. And we're not even building anything. I mean, we might have to declare bankruptcy here. Oh, there goes our bankruptcy. Now I'm importing from everywhere. I'm gonna have to maybe declare interest a little bit further afield just so I can get some access to some trade. There we go. Let's get more crap here. Can I export? Okay. All right, well, this will finally get us seeing some money, at least a little bit. Let's see if we can make any more, any more trade deals. What do I have? Fertilizer. A lot of people want fertilizer. People want my steamers too. Woo! And we are finally back into seeing some money. The tax luxury furniture get us a little bit more. All right, things are looking much better now. We did have to take a big hit <laughs> on declaring bankruptcy. It was a pretty rough, rough road to independence. First, we fought a war and failed, and then we spent so much money getting our independence that we bankrupted ourselves. That being said, we are finally on the track to things looking good. We have our market stabilized, although we are still in some turmoil. It's because we lost a lot of standard of living. You know what? I'm going to increase my police force as a result. And my home affairs. Okay. But now things are finally starting to look good. There we go. It's a great culling, but we are finally back on track. Wow. Yeah. What a monster transformation. Now we're making like $100,000. Okay, let's bring things back into balance. It stopped taxing people so heavily. Took a massive GDP hit. Look at that. It hit independence gave us just a massive decrease. And we also had a massive decrease in standard of living too. But things are going back. Get a bit more destruction capability now. Tempted to go down for council and public. But that would be me abandoning my current progress. But that being said, you know what? We could just go full communism after our departure from Great Britain. We do have the capability to do that for sure. Okay, well, in the meantime, we'll go for total separation. Uh, our radicals are declining massively. Our loyalists are back up. Things are looking much better. Finally, we can incorporate Western Australia. That's only going to cost us a shit ton of bureaucracy. So now, Tasmania has almost 3 million people living on it. Quite a massive increase for this little island. We can finally take off the liquor tax. People of Australia rejoice in ways that they have never rejoiced before. Things continue to go well. We're now at 1882. Just did protected speech. And like I said, things are going very, very well. Our economy is booming. We're now the 10th greatest power in the world. And our ninth, our GDP is ninth in the world. And basically right now, I'm just focusing on building up and up and up as much as I can, taking care of any expensive issues like, or any expensive goods like iron right now, crap ton of iron mines and wood mines in the work. And this should help bring down the cost of the inputs. Yeah, so right now my goal is basically just to keep booming. Oh, perfect. And that'll also help us keep colonizing this area because yeah, I want to get as many rubber plantations as I can and not to mention oil here there'll be oil here as well but there'll be oil in other places in Australia so it's not that big a deal all right we have now entered the era of great power it's 
Australia has a ridiculous GDP. Let's, uh, let's look at the stats here. Number one country is Austria. I've actually never seen that before. So Germany, France, Russia, then Australia. Comes to our GDP, we have uh, almost a larger GDP than Russia. We have a larger GDP than the United States, and we're nipping at the heels of both Great Britain and France. Is Austria, like, gigantic or something? Not particularly. They're just regular-sized Austria for the most part. All right, another 10 years or so has passed, and Australia is just ballooning in terms of wealth and prosperity. Currently, we have maximum payments and minimum taxes. Although, I guess I do have to get rid of some of these because my authority is going down. We sell far more than enough money to cover our costs. And yeah, Australia is now the fourth world power. Once again, I have nothing that I want. All right, I think I pretty much finished my laws anyway. In any case, we are now the fourth largest power right behind the United States, even though we have double the GDP as them and considerably higher standard of living. In addition, we have not too, we're not that far behind the United States in terms of population. That being said, and then above us, we have the Germans and Austrians, both of whom who have a ridiculous GDP, but I'm hoping that I can definitely beat them. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of GDP, I'm already number four. We've got plenty of time left, so my big goal with this playthrough is to become the world's highest GDP as Australia. In Indonesia, it's just popping off here. New Guinea is almost completely colonized, and it just has some wonderful, delicious resources for us. They have oil, they have rubber, they have everything I could conceivably want. Yeah, I just need more engines, eh? Another couple of years later, our GDP continues to skyrocket. We are now uh, number one per capita. Our standard of living is quite high. Our upper strata is living in ridiculous luxury. And who is the only one still beating us? Is it Germany? Yeah, Germany is still beating us, not even by that much. We are nipping at their heels. Thankfully, the Austrians are having some sort of revolt, which is helping me um, catch up to them. But either way, I definitely think by the end of this campaign, we are going to be the top superpower. Right now, basically, I'm just trying to keep on top of my goods and production, make sure that everything is growing smoothly. And then, yeah, we continue to expand. My main thing right now is I'm trying to eliminate people in subsistence farming locations, trying to get them out of the farm, out of their subsistence farms and into actual productive farms. Yeah, we've got so much construction capacity that we don't know what to do with it. Yeah, motor industries are booming. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's take a look at old Tasmania. It has now has a population of 7 million. Actually starting to lose a little bit. Oh, it's overpopulated, that's why. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it almost like, again, still about one third of the entire Australian population lives here. It's now 70% Australian. The Irish have been diluted. In terms of our total population, women's suffrage, we're doing it quite early. It's not even 1900 yet. Yeah, yeah, pretty a nice uh, liberal democracy going on. What exactly are we called here? We're just a republic. The yeah, Republic of Australia. Well, it's finally happened. Just at the turn of the century, Australia is now rocketed into the highest GDP in the world and also highest GDP per capita. We're still number third behind Austria and Germany, even though our GDP is higher than both of them. They do have a larger population and more prestige, but our standard of living is also the highest in the world by a considerable margin. Our middle class is prosperous, our upper strata is wealthy, and the lower strata is secure. Not only that, we have low taxes, high wages, and we're not even doing any consumption taxes right now. And I'm also running out of resources to build. Did they say gold or oil? Yeah, it is oil. There we go. I've been waiting for that, waiting to be able to get our oil up and running. Now it's just going to explode our GDP even further. So here we are in 1909. 
and Australia is booming. We have almost 25 million population. We are now far and away the world's largest economy. If we bring up our map here, excuse me, our rankings here, we can see that we have almost 200 million higher GDP than Germany. We still lack in the prestige department and the population department. They have considerably more people than we do. But what I've been focusing on mainly is trade and urbanization to really blow up our GDP. Looking here, Tasmania has developed into quite an urban sprawl. We have buildings piling all over the island. In fact, we are the number one urban center in the world currently. And how many people live in this province now? 8 million. About a third of Australia's population lives here. Unfortunately, it's getting to the point where it's getting overpopulated. So I've started to urbanize a lot of the other areas of Australia, especially in New Zealand. Just keep expanding. As usual, we have been exporting particularly a lot, a, a lot of fertilizer, and it's getting us a ton of money. Particularly to Russia, we're exporting crap tons of fertilizer to the country, and it's getting us lots and lots of money. It's getting us lots and lots of money. Main thing we're doing right now is we are funding an expedition for the western frontier of Australia, and that is costing us a lot of money. In fact, I am going to increase the taxes slightly in order to compensate for that expedition. One of the things I was thinking about about this game, and one of the powers of multiculturalism is consider how our population has changed throughout the duration of our playthrough. Currently, we're at 70% Australian. And what I think this is a reflection of is that, say an Australian and you know Portuguese person get married, they have a kid, I believe that kid would become Australian in the way the game calculates population. And I think not only that, but even if, you know, a Brazilian and a Flemish person came to Australia and they had a kid, that kid would also be considered Australian. So one of the things that over time is through multiculturalism, the amount of Australians actually increases as part of the overall population because the children uh, you know, people who come and move to the country are considered Australian. It looks like our expedition was successfully completed. Hooray! We have found, after a long and arduous journey, the expedition has finally come to an end. The expedition has managed to find and map the entirety of the Great Salt Lake. Hooray! Good job, everybody. Oh, thank God. More oil. I need more oil desperately. This is the one real bottleneck in our economy is we are lacking oil. We are trading for all the oil that we possibly can, but it's still nowhere near enough to meet our demands. After spending a baffling amount of time figuring out what the hell I was doing wrong, I finally figured it out. So what was happening is that around this time, when I would switch over from standardized filing system to telephone switchboards, what would happen is that, yeah, you get a crap ton of bureaucracy, which is great, but your demand for telephones would go through the roof, which is usually would be fine. So you start producing telephones, but what happens is, is because you have so many government buildings as a result of needing that bureaucracy from before, all that, ha that happens is that you just keep producing telephones and your government keeps buying all these telephones and it just ends up being a black hole for your entire economy. So what I ended up doing was just simply reducing the amount of government buildings. For example, this used to be 30 in Tasmania. I've cut it in half to 15. And as you can see, we still have plenty of bureaucracy left. And well, our telephones aren't doing as hot as they used to, I think I may have overextended that a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna cut that down just a touch. But regardless, we are now completely back in the green. What was happening is this black hole of telephones was just getting so and so deep that I just keep increasing my taxation level, decreasing my wages, but that wasn't helping because all, it was do all that was happening is that the government was purchasing all these telephones needlessly. So that's a big tip for you guys. Just remember when you move over from standardized filing to telephones to 
diminish some of your government buildings because not only is that going to cost you additional, we also now have the benefit of being able to reassign a lot of these bureaucrats and workers into other areas, which is something we desperately need. We have two major bottlenecks before we enter the final stage of the campaign. But those two bottlenecks are oil. We're not getting enough oil. I'm you know, trying to import all the oil that I possibly can, but it's just never, ever enough. And then the next bottleneck is workers. We have still 26.7 million people living here, but it's not no, it's nowhere near enough, especially when you consider that our opponents are considerably higher in terms of population. Like Great Britain, this is the lowest I've ever seen them, down to 16th. In any case, so we need more workers and we need more oil. But regardless, I'm hoping to get to 1 billion GDP. That would be awesome and that would be a great climax for old Australia to be the world's largest economy by a considerable margin. So here we are at 1919 with the campaign almost done. We are approaching the end and I've just been sitting on my laurels continuing to build and we have achieved the one billionaire achievement. Hooray! Getting a GDP over one billion dollars. And that's pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy about that, obviously. And we still have a awesome economy. We are have almost no taxation. We have high wages, no consumption taxes. Things are continuing to look good. We are crushing everybody worldwide. There's nobody who even comes close to us. So I'm just hoping we can maintain that GDP. The one thing I'm thinking about doing is finding someone I can use my incredibly modern and powerful military against because it'd be fun just to test it out. So I've been bullying some people. I've been doing some good old fashioned imperialism, trying to take any place that has oil or rubber. And this obviously is right next door to us in Brunei and Borneo. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I think hopefully this will, once all these oil rigs get built, resolve our oil output shortages. And I'm sitting around doing nothing when I, as a, I'm trying to take Burma as a colony. However, this has gotten the majority of the world very angry with us and it has actually tanked our trade relations, which is unfortunately bad because we rely on those trade relations for a lot of our income, but it's okay. Hopefully we can restore them after we take out Burma here. Either way, gotta get the Navy going. Wow, they have trench infantry, which is good for them. Why is their offense so low? Insufficient and naval offense. God damn. Really? That's insufficient? Seems like dreadnoughts, aircraft carriers, battleships, submarines. Well, I guess not so much submarines, but... Should be enough naval support. All right, would you look at that? I finally have enough naval power to hopefully make a landing here. Let's see if I can. Can't really see any of the action that's going on. But that being said, I was I just increased my naval capacity from twenty to thirty ships, and that looks like it has done the trick. And on top of that, pretty much all of Burma's allies have abandoned it. So that kind of sucks for it. There we go. Finally, we make headway. These regular troops, though, are mechanized infantry. The 55th Afro-American Mechanized Infantry. That's one of the things I really love about this game. It shows you where the regiments originated from. Are they going to capitulate? Yep, subject of Burma. Oof, it was looking a little grim there. Didn't know if we were actually going to make it, but we did. Now, I guess we can connect these guys. I don't know. Let's just conquer them outright. Okay, no one, will, no one gives a crap. So, after all these conquests, <laughs> I have become a pariah. And Germany has decided that they are going to cut me down to size. It's very interesting. This might be the only way I could have a chance beat them in the prestige battle is to beat them here and here's the thing is 
I don't know what they're going to do because they're going to have to land here to cut me down to size, so to speak. And it is not going to be easy. We had a lot of trade with Germany. We might need to retool our oil production. Yeah, that really hurt our economy then dipping like that. This has to have hurt their GDP just as much as it did ours, right? Nope, somehow it's making theirs stronger. Oh shit, the Germans are finally trying to land, and it's not going to go good for them. We have 150 divisions here, so they're just getting slaughtered. Hopefully, getting them to pay us war reparations will help. Goodbye, Germany. So, a couple of years into the war here, Germany has not decided to land again. And we are four years before the end of the campaign. Unfortunately, because Germany abandoned us, it really tanked our economy. We are strong trade partners. But that being said, I've spent the last little bit just rejiggering everything. There we go. We're finally getting to the point where we're losing our convoys. Our convoys are starting to be used for other markets and other trades because when you start a trade route, it doesn't start immediately at high level, right? It needs to, over time, build up. And from there, whoops, go and keep building on that. But yeah, we were at 160,000 convoys. Now we're just at 60,000. So our, our trade is looking back where it should be. And we've done our best to replace Germany as a trade partner. But yeah, the war, we took a sizable hit there, but we're clawing back up. All right, so Germany is at zero now. I'm assuming it's not going to go down any further. Because we don't actually have any of their territory. Yeah, well, I guess your war is not really going to go as well as anybody thought. So we just declare white peace. Unfortunately, I was really hoping to cut down their prestige bonus, but unfortunately, we are not going to be able to do that. But at least uh, the Germans and I are back on speaking terms. I was just not paying attention, and we get the game over screen. I thought it ended on a gen the end of 1936, but it ends at the beginning of 1936. But there's a pretty great campaign. We brought Australia from the little island of Tasmania, federated the entire country, and made ourselves the, war the world's largest economy by a considerable margin. So you can see, there was a war with Germany when the trade fell through. But then after that, everything went back on the up and up. And unfortunately, we couldn't get enough prestige to make it to number one. Both Austria and Germany beat us in that regard, but that's okay. We have, I would, we've done way better than I thought we would do at the end of the day. Things are obviously fantastic for the people of Australia in this world. We ended up with a population of mostly Australian, 7% South German, and a 21 million Malaysian. In any case... Our population, all told, was over 46 million people, which is crazy. That's well above the size of Australia today and above the size of Canada. So it's a huge, massive population. But either way, let's just see if we can see anything here before we wrap up. All told, we finish off at 1.4 billion GDP, which is pretty astounding as Australia at 46 million population standard of living 28.6 we had some pretty good points where we were at above 30 everyone is living very well the lower class is prosperous the middle class is affluent and the upper class is wealthy 96 percent of people can read very few radicals things are looking pretty good for australia overall it's a pretty good playthrough we ended as uh, basically a laissez-faire economy although the social democratic party continue to win over and over and over again and although that didn't cause us to change our actual economic laws it did allow us to get a pretty decent social safety net for our people so i think that helped the lower classes live a pretty decent life in any case that's going to be it for our australian playthrough i think i'm going to have one or two more playthroughs of victoria 2 before we call it on the game i'm going to do one more as a communist nation 
Haven't decided which country is going to be the full communist playthrough yet, but we shall see. And until that time, this has been Comrade, signing off for now, and you guys take care. This here's the wattle, the emblem of our land. You can stick it in a bottle, you can hold it in your hand. I'm here. <laughs>